All right, guys, as we dive into this lesson, there are some things I want you to keep in mind. So first and foremost, literally for hundreds of years, students in art have studied the artwork of famous artists. And the reason they do this is in order to learn and hone their own craft. So as we study the art of Romero Brito, we want to do more than just view and appreciate his artwork. We want to analyze it, which means we want to study it carefully. And we want to do this in order to improve our own artistic technique, process, and of course, our artwork. So for this portion of the project, we will be analyzing Romero Brito's artwork and documenting his use of subject matter, his use of elements and principles of art, including color and pattern. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want you to do is grab your visual journal. You're gonna need three blank pages for this portion of the assignment. So let me show you what this looks like. I have two pages side by side. You can see I've already begun some work on this. And then I have one more following on the back, okay? So we're looking for three pages in your visual journal that are currently blank. Um, it's a good idea to have two that are side by side. And then for this page, which we will be talking about later, um, it's fine if it's on the back. Now, if you don't have room in your visual journal or you don't have a visual journal for whatever reason, um, you can use a larger heavy sheet of blank paper, okay? And what you can do is use that paper in the same way we're using our visual journal. So on the first page, I want you to write the artist's name, Romero Brito, okay? I suggest writing it along the edges. You can follow my example if you like, or if you're feeling a bit more creative, you can come up with your own placement. Just keep in mind that you will need a significant amount of space for the step that follows. I recommend you sketch the artist's name very lightly with pencil. So you wanna start in pencil. I did not start with Sharpie, I started with pencil so that I made sure my layout was gonna work before I went back in with my Sharpie, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, so you're gonna lay it out. Um, I use the edges. Of course, you could do it along the bottom here instead. You could come down this side. It's up to you. But as I mentioned, you're gonna need a significant portion of space for this. So you may wanna listen to the next set of directions before laying this the rest of the way out. Um, so I did use pencil. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a pencil, an eraser, and then, um, I'll tell you, for this, I happen to use some stencils that I had laying around my house. So maybe you have some old stencils laying around. If you want to use those, this would be a great opportunity to use these in your visual journal. Of course, if you don't have stencils, you can always just do regular handwriting. You can do bubble letters, block letters, um, any stylized letter that you would like to use to just make your page a little bit more interesting. I also use Sharpie on this. Now, one word of caution with Sharpie is that you do have to be careful with how heavily you're putting the Sharpie on. Now, this is th pretty thick paper, so it doesn't necessarily bleed through, but you can kind of see an outline or a shadow of it coming through the background. So if you have something really important on this side that you don't want ruined, you may want to avoid the use of Sharpie. All right. Um, you could always use regular marker, you can just use pencil, you could use colored pencils. Um, anything that you wanna use to write out the artist's name is fine. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to lay out 10 spaces on this page. So on the page where you've written the artist's name, Romero Brito, you're gonna lay out 10 spaces. So let's count and make sure I have enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so when you do this, you can do this freehand or um, you can find something to use as a pattern. So some suggestions I have for that include blocks. So if you look at this, every single one of these sections that I drew on my page, um, I just used a block and I traced around it with pencil. So I laid it all out to make sure that I had everything in a place that was gonna work. 
and that I could fit 10 blocks or squares on here. Now, something else you could do, let's say you don't have um, blocks at home, you could do this in circles, but again, whatever you're doing, you have to keep in mind that you are going to be painting these sections in and labeling them, okay? So that's something you need to keep in mind. If you're creative and you're thoughtful, I'm sure you'll be able to find something in your house that you can use to lay out your 10 spaces. So you have to have 10, I repeat, 10 spaces laid out on your page, okay? So again, as I always recommend, you're gonna lightly sketch these in so that if you need to make adjustments, you can erase and place something somewhere else. I did make adjustments when I worked on this. It's hard to tell because I drew very lightly. So always draw lightly, okay? So once you have the artist's name written out and you've successfully placed um, out your 10 spaces, the next thing you're going to do is you are going to use the Google Slide document Romero Brito to study the colors used by the artist. Your job is to document the colors as accurately as you can by recreating them with watercolor paints and painting one color that he used in each of the 10 squares. Okay, so when you're doing this, you wanna pick a color he used consistently. I do not want you to use neutrals here, so no black, white, uh, or brown. I want you to focus on colors that we might see on the color wheel. All right, so no neutrals. And you should be getting familiar with what a neutral is. So you're gonna document those colors that you saw consistently used as accurately as possible, one in each box or circle, however you've divided your page. I would start by writing the name of the color under the sections and then painting it in. Um, so I use Sharpie, so this is fine. If you're not using Sharpie, um, you can use colored pencil, regular pencil. I wrote mine inside my box. I'm actually gonna be painting over it. Now, if this was Crayola marker, that would be a terrible idea because it would bleed into my watercolor paints as soon as it got wet. But because I use Sharpie, it should be fine. It shouldn't bleed at all. Sharpie is a permanent marker, so it shouldn't bleed into my watercolors. So I'm gonna demonstrate this for you um, just so you get an idea of kind of what this should look like. So remember that if you want a color very saturated or vibrant, and the colors we see in Romero Brito's artwork are definitely saturated and vibrant, then you're gonna use less water when you are painting in your area. So if I added a lot of water to this yellow, it would be very diluted and I wouldn't get as bright of a color. So I'm really not using much water on my brush at all. I just got the brush damp and then I am simply going pretty heavily in with the color. Not a lot of water because I want this yellow to be very bright, vibrant and it's close to the yellow that I saw Romero Brito use in his paintings that I studied. So because I used Sharpie, I can go ahead and paint right over that. But again, if you don't use Sharpie, you may wanna paint it in first and then write the name over top. Okay, so be thoughtful in your decisions and how you're using your materials. Okay, so I can let that dry. You can see that I've started labeling in the rest of my 10 boxes. I'm not gonna walk you through this step by step. This is a task that I need you to do on your own. One of the standards in art is about analyzing work, okay, so studying it. What I need you to show me is that you can do this on your own. So I'm looking to see how accurately you're documenting his use of color by putting those colors that you saw he used with a name and recreating the color as close as possible. Okay, so that's your goal. Now, eventually I'm gonna be adding on to this video and I'll be doing the next side. Before you move on to the next step in this lesson, it's really important that you let this dry fully, okay? So you don't wanna mess anything up. 
All right, that's it for our first step.